Here we have a small demonstration process consisting of a muffin style DC air fan that's acting as a turbo generator. We blow air at it, compressed air, through a copper tube nozzle that spins the blades of the fan, generating a DC voltage. That DC voltage is interpreted by this transmitter device, converting it to a 4 to 20 milliamp signal that represents the fan speed. That 4 to 20 milliamp signal goes through a set of cables onto our PLC control in this enclosure. The PLC then generates a 4 to 20 milliamp output signal, driving this I to P transducer, sending air pressure to the control valve, which directs how much compressed air to send to the turbine. So we have a working feedback loop for turbine speed control. What I'd like to demonstrate to you right now is the actual control system itself, which consists of an Allen Bradley MicroLogix 1100 controller right here with an add-on unit, an IF2 OF2 model analog I.O. card. This particular card has two channels of analog input and two channels of analog output, 4 to 20 milliamps both. The MicroLogix PLC implements a PID control instruction to do the proportional integral derivative control. So we can enter a set point value into this. We can have auto manual mode, direct reverse acting, and various uh, degrees or um, values of PI and D to tell it how aggressive to be in its control. The 1100 controller here is the MicroLogix has Ethernet capability, which is very, very cool. So we can tie this controller into our Ethernet network and have remote access to it, both for program programming and for operation. So I want to show you briefly how this works. If we head over here to our control panel, I can show you one of the PCs we have in our Ethernet network. This one right here is currently running RS Lynx, the Rockwell um, communication software used for its PLCs and also running RS Logics MicroStarter Lite which is the free programming software that works with the 1100 PLC unit. And here we can see the program itself and of particular interest is the PID instruction right there and we can navigate to that instruction and double click where it says setup screen and now we see a setup screen where it can change our P, I and D parameters, our loop update time, our direct reverse action we can change auto and manual mode right from here if we wish. Um, and uh, we can set our set point. We can look at our set point min and max values, our output value, process variable. These are all the Boolean flags, uh, auto manual, uh, control mode, etc. Now, we could control the process from here, uh, but that's really not the way a normal operator would. So to facilitate the operators or anyone else acting as an operator to actually run this process, we've installed another piece of hardware. This is an HMI panel, a human machine interface. This one happens to be manufactured by Automation Direct, the Seymour uh, panel, six inch diagonal screen with color and ethernet capability. So it plugs into our ethernet network along with that PC and of course the MicroLogix 1100 PLC. So they're all on the same network with their own IP addresses. So from here I can take control over that PID instruction in the MicroLogix 1100. In this case, I can adjust my set point where I want it to be, and then I can switch from manual mode into auto mode. And when I do that, it begins ramping up the output, the turbine comes up to speed, you'll see a red bar here, overshoots a little bit, and then corrects back to set point. So it's acting as a PID loop controller. 4 to 20 milliamps in, representing turbine speed, 4 to 20 milliamps out, representing valve position. Now this right here is all digital, so what you see here has no analog signals in it at all. It's talking uh, over Ethernet to the PLC, which is handling the analog signals. As you can see, I can change set point here, move the set point up, calling for a higher turbine speed. I can move the set point down, calling for a lower turbine speed, and a little bit of overshoot down there. We actually have the wrong valve trim for the application. This is a great illustration of uh, where we really need to have an equal percentage type valve trim and instead we have linear. So down at the bottom end of the range it's very touchy, it tends to overshoot and oscillate. Whereas at the top end of the range it's almost sluggish by comparison. Hardly any overshoot to speak of and at the very top of the range it even has difficulty making up uh, to the new set point because the valve trim has the wrong characterization. But that's another topic. I just wanted to demonstrate how we can do loop control, PID loop control, using fairly inexpensive hardware. The Allen Bradley MicroLogix 1100 PLC unit, uh, which does a very good job of the PID control, and is programmable over the network using free software. Then of course we have the HMI unit, which we can use for operator interface. 
and um, makes for a nice little system. Now, one of the additional features of the Seymour HMI interface right here is that we have web access to it. Notice, of course, the panel has its own IP address. If we come over here, this is the Seymour programming software, which we can use to uh, generate new screens for that HMI. But if it simply go to any computer on the network here and start up Internet Explorer, what I can do is type in the IP address of that panel, in this case 169.254.5.11. I've typed it in in the past, so there it is. If I type that in, it's asking for a username and a password. I can enter the username and the password. Click OK, and it brings me to a screen. My caps lock is on. Of course, this stuff only happens when you're shooting a video. Now I log in here to the Seymour panel. The Seymour panel actually acts as its own web server, its own uh, HTTP web server. I can take a look at screens that are on this panel. For example, I can click to this screen right here, and that's my uh, graphing screen. I can click to the one we saw before, the faceplate, process variable, set point, and output. These are static screen displays. I can just capture one screen at a time. Or what's cooler yet is I can navigate back and do remote access. Uh, no firewall or router in this case. And with remote access, it's going to run a client application asking for a username and password again. And this client application acts as a remote desktop client to the HMI panel. So this is not a static display. This is actually a live display. So I can actually click on objects here, just like I can touch objects on this panel with my finger. So for example, if I slide the set point up, instead of 35, we're now at 53%. I come back over here, and lo and behold, we're at 53% set point, and you see a live display on the process variable bar graph on, uh, on the output, the PV signals. I can also take my mouse and move that set point here. There's a little bit of uh, latency, a little bit of lag over the network but I do have remote access control with this uh, interface. I can also click this button like I'd normally touch the button. It goes to manual mode and you can see over here indeed it has gone to manual mode. So everything I click on and touch on and move over on this computer display um, is shown on the regular HMI and of course affects the control system. Now to do this all you need is a web browser. You don't need any special software. Any web browser will do and it just needs to be configured in the HMI for remote access and web service. And once you've got that set up, you just simply type in the IP address of your panel, and lo and behold, you have control. So, here's an illustration of a simple PID loop control system made of, with an Allen Bradley Micrologic 1100 PLC, Automation Direct Seymour HMI, and then showing the capabilities uh, using web access using a browser. I can actually control that HMI remotely.